All right, well, time to regroup. The level three exam, as we know, is being pushed to December 2020. We're not sure exactly what date it's going to be, but I, my thinking is it'll be somewhere in around uh, the, the current level one date because all those rooms are booked. Uh, all those testing centers are booked. So to um, try to get the few days after or the few days before that particular date um, might be the easiest thing to do. So I, I, I think uh, in around that date. So um, if we assume December 5th is the average date, 260 days to get there. Uh, that's one reading per week. Uh, so for um, some of you who were uh, not prepared or who knew that you weren't going to make it this year or who might have decided that, you know what, I'm not even going to show up because I'm not going to make it. I'll do it next year. Uh, this is good news. It bought you some time. Um, but for many people, they were 70, 80, 90 percent of the way there. This is not good news uh, because there is the inevitable knowledge decay that's going to happen with more time. And to try to stay in exam mode uh, with your knowledge for eight and a half months uh, is going to be uh, excruciating. Uh, it's, you're going to burn out. You're not going to be able to maintain it. So yeah, some people win, some people lose on this one. Uh, so let's see what we can do to make a, a good situation better and to make a bad situation good with uh, one reading per week. You can now go back and redo those readings that you found particularly challenging. For some of you, it might have been currency management in book three. For others, yield uh, yield curve strategies uh, in book four. This gives you time to go back and say, with all the time that I have, I'm going to break this reading down. I'm going to spend two weeks on just this one. It's not going to beat me. Uh, so you now have the time to go back and redo those difficult readings. You can go slow. You can take your time. You have the luxury of time right now. For those that were ready... Uh, this is a, a bit of a problem, so let's see what strategy we can come up with. Let's uh, just put a timeline out, and let's say that this is when you start studying. This was the June exam. Typically, when we start with new uh, content, it doesn't come together in our minds very easily, so the learning curve is, is pretty flat at that point in time. Then it really accelerates as things come together, uh, and if the exam is at some point in time, we sort of level off, and this is really when we start to consolidate until we uh, hit the exam. So this is probably... On the, this curve, many of you were probably right there, ready to go into the consolidation phase. Now, if you don't consolidate, what happens is you end up doing this and then only having to run it back up again to meet the December exam. So what we want to do is come up with a strategy where you don't have to stay in exam mode for eight and a half months. It's kind of hard to hold this point on the curve for eight and a half months. Uh, what we'd like to do is, we know there's going to be some knowledge decay, but we'd like it to be, you know, a little bit lower so that uh, when we ramp up, it's not so bad. So use those review videos often. Cycle through them. Uh, it's okay, I think, to put level three on the shelf for the next 60 days, next 90 days, next two, three months. Enjoy your life. Have a good time. While you're enjoying your life, I strongly recommend that you listen to Bloomberg in the morning. Because in the morning, they have portfolio managers on, analysts, asset managers, and they're all talking level three content. When you listen to them, it's all about asset management. It's all about positioning for expectations. Listen to them. Listen to the fixed income guys. What, what, what are they paying attention to? Can you relate that to something in the reading? How are they positioning their portfolio? Listen to the equity guys. What are they doing? Uh, and see if you can pull those real world applications out of what they're saying and say, well, that ties back to this, that ties back to that. It, when they're telling their story, uh, you remember stories better than you remember lists of facts. Uh, so sometimes it's better to, to complete your learning, complete your training by listening to that because that's real world stuff. So for the next uh, 60 or 90 days, if you want to put it on the shelf, I'm not going to browbeat you over that. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you've already put in the time. You're, you're somewhere up here. Um, trying to maintain that for eight and a half months, you're just going to burn out. So you may as well put it aside. Uh, use Bloomberg in the morning and maybe once a week, set aside two, three hours once a week just to cycle through the review videos, just to hear it, to say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm up on that. I still remember that so that you don't forget it. So hopefully you don't dip too far uh, down on the curve that you 
uh, sort of ele keep it elevated so this knowledge is consolidating using Bloomberg in the review so that your uh, home run stretch when you get into uh, October, November uh, is pretty much where you are right now or hopefully uh, with uh, more consolidated uh, knowledge going into it. Uh, so uh, there we go. Mock exams, we're going to delay the launch of these till September 1st. It's far too early uh, to be doing mock exams at this point. You really want to do these before the exam. Uh, so this gives me uh, a sort of two opportunities here. Opportunity number one is there were uh, some questions at level one, the AM. I think I have somewhere between 45 and 50 questions spread over four exams. There were less than 10, about half a dozen or so that were carryovers from last year that I repaired, uh, but that I still didn't like. You know, as I read them, I thought, you know, I can... I can do better, just, you know, you don't really have the time uh, if you're trying to meet a June exam. I now have the time, so I'm going to upgrade those. Not only that, I'm going to go over each question, and I'm going to make them just a bit harder. Not that much harder, just a bit harder, because there is some thinking that, well, if the exam has been delayed uh, for six months, that gives everybody six more months' time. Aren't they just going to make the exam harder? I mean, they can't have it such that there's 70% pass rate, can they? Are they going to try to maintain the same 55 60% pass rate? Aren't they just going to make it harder? Okay, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the answer to that, but what I'll do is I'll make mine harder. How's that? So uh, if they make theirs harder, you'll be training on harder exams for their exam. If they don't make their, theirs harder, bravo, right? So I'm going to upgrade the difficulty level on these exams just a bit. Not, not so much that it discourages you that you can't get it anymore, just a bit. Office hours, we are suspending office hours now because, well, there, there's only three, four sessions left and it was meant to be the wrap-up sessions. Well, it's too early for that. We're going to go start to, starting September 1st. We're going to resume the office hours from the beginning. So if you have the office hours add-on and you haven't been attending, uh, attendance hasn't been that great at them anyways. Uh, so this gives you an opportunity to redo it again uh, from the beginning. We will start over from the beginning, and uh, I'll be posting a schedule on office hours in a few weeks uh, as soon as I find a way to, because I got level one, level two, and level three office hours to do. I got to find a way to fit them all in such that I'm not so overwhelmed that I can't keep up with it. But I'll be posting something in a few weeks on uh, on office hours. So you don't have to worry about office hours on the weekends now. You're not going to be missing anything. So no no office hours videos will be going up for level three. Um, we'll just resume this from the beginning, starting September 1st. Also for book three, you'll notice uh, I never had review videos up for book three. Uh, and the reason is, is uh, a lot of those readings have so, a lot of tiny little detail. Uh, and it was hard for me to figure out how do I do a review well without including all the tiny detail because if I include all the tiny detail they end up just being almost as long as the main video in which case why not just watch the main video so now I'll uh, go back and I'll try to figure out how to do the reviews well for this one I'll add reviews for book three also in book six reading 35 and 36 did not have reviews again tiny detail but I'll go back and I'll try to figure that out somebody had asked for the end of chapter questions for reading six this is on global investment performance standards I don't feel that I can add a lot of value there only because um, it's a memorization chapter. As you read the question, there's A, B, C. Either you know it or you don't. There's not a lot to figure out, uh, but I'll do them anyways. So uh, I'll put that up over the next six to eight weeks as well. Grading sessions. Anybody who had a grading session, um, no point. Uh, we're going to move these to October, November. There's no point in doing a grading now. Uh, this is really something you should do when you're uh, really ready for the exam and just before the exam to get those that, that final little bit done for you, uh, that final little bit of feedback. So we're going to move it to the October-November period. Anybody with grading sessions, you'll get contacted over the next uh, couple of weeks as we uh, try to figure out, you know, do we still have the grader? Is the grader still available at that time? If not, we have to make other arrangements. And then as far as rescheduling, the easiest thing to do is say, well, if your grading was 43 days before the exam, as soon as they announce the exam in May, we'll just back up 43 days from that date in December and give you the same distance from the exam that you had previously. So if you were 60 days, if you had uh, two sessions, you were 60 days in front and 30 days, we'll do the same thing. We'll try to stagger it. We'll just move it over and let everybody know what dates we moved it to. 
and then from there we'll rearrange. The weekend seminar. I, uh, I'm absolutely certain the hotel is not going to allow any of these things to go forward at this point in time. Uh, we're waiting for the inevitable, and I'm sure they're waiting for the inevitable word from head office that uh, everything is suspended. Uh, so um, we're going to reschedule to November sometime. Problem is, <clears throat> since we don't know when the exam is yet, we don't know when to reschedule it for. Don't want to be too far away from the exam, but uh, you don't want to book it uh, such that it lands on the same weekend. So again, uh, we're left with some uncertainty here. And well, if we're going to be in finance, we better get used to uncertainty because finance is a world of uncertainty, right? So there's some uncertainty there as to uh, what date the weekend seminar will be on, but we're going to reschedule it to November sometime. We're just not sure on what date it's going to be. Uh, so to sum up, uh, for those of you who um, felt unprepared, well, you got a gift, uh, you know, in, in uh, an unfortunate way, but you got a gift. For those of you that were prepared, well, a gift was taken away from you. Uh, so that, uh, you know, now you run the risk of, uh, you know, some knowledge decay over the summer and then having to put in the same amount of hours just to ramp back up again. Uh, but if you use those review videos and you use them often and you tune into Bloomberg in the mornings, um, I think you should be able to maintain, if not uh, refine, the knowledge that you have. And as far as, you know, the dedication to, uh, you know, listening to Bloomberg in the morning, uh, in this profession, if you're going to be in the markets, you need to be in the markets. It must become a lifestyle. Uh, it, it, it has to consume you. Uh, every minute of the day, you have to want to know more and more about what's going on in the world. How are other people thinking about this? And not because you want to follow them. It's because it gives you ideas sometimes. You, you, somebody will say something, you think, I never quite saw it that way. That's interesting. And it might combine with something you know and open up another thought or another idea or highlight something. So I find that it's, it's critical to listen to what other people are saying and what other people are thinking. And sometimes it's important just to know when to get out of the way. You may not agree with the crowd, but if the crowd is stampeding towards you, get the hell out of the way. Uh, so it is important. And uh, again, these, these are real live, real world asset managers uh, managing billions of dollars, openly talking about how they feel, what they're looking at, what they're watching, how they're positioning their portfolio, what their expectations are, what's important, what will affect their portfolio. That's all level three. All of that. That's beautiful. That's applied. That's as applied as you're going to get. So use that free resource. Uh, I think the first two hours of Bloomberg are on uh, uh, YouTube every morning. Uh, so it's free access on, on YouTube. Uh, I think it's called Market Surveillance. Uh, it's uh, full access on YouTube for that. So uh, use that. And you don't have to tune in in the morning because it's on YouTube. You can tune in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and just understand that, that was what you're watching was you know, done in the morning. Okay. That's all I have for you.